So hi, this is the first video of a series I plan to make. This is to uh, basically just share some information I've learned about stocks and securities and trading and such like that. So to begin with, uh, let's start off with a stock. So what's a stock? A stock is partial ownership of a company. A uh, publicly traded corporation sells shares of their stock or shares of their company and they do that with stocks so they put out so many hundreds and thousands or whatever shares of stock and the market determines what the value of that stock is okay now the pros and cons of the stock a stock can be traded when the market's open instantaneously for the most part uh, until somebody wants it. So what does it mean? Um, you The value of that stock goes up and down dynamically throughout the course of the day when the market's open. If you look at the chart, you can see what the, like yesterday is, what it opened, what it closed. You can uh, take a look at the chart and see how it fluctuated throughout that day. So if you own that stock, it's considered a rather liquid investment, meaning you can instantly sell it. Uh, you go on there and you put an offer out there to sell it and somebody will buy it. I mean, unless it's a, just an odd situation or something. Now, does it mean you'll sell it at a profit? That, that just depends on the market. So, what is the stock worth? Let's talk about that. Um, this is going to be hard to grasp for some people, but the stock value, the price of it, has nothing really to do with the company, has really nothing to do with what it does. Um, the market can be manipulated up and down depending on um, what the large investment firms are doing with that stock for the most part. So what influences the price of the stock? Take a look, for example, this coronavirus. You know, it's a, it's messed up a lot of companies, a lot of markets because people are at home, they're not working, things aren't being produced, so forth and so on. So a lot of the market's down right now. Is that a bad thing? If you're looking to invest, it means the stock's on sale. It means you can take advantage of a lot of good things right now. Uh, if the stock is up real high, depending on how that compares to, say, the 52-week high and low, it might be a deal or it might not be a deal. If the 52-week high is, say, $10 a share, and it's trading at $9.95 or $9.98, eh, chances are you don't want to buy that one because there's not a whole lot of room for it to go up unless there's something that's going to happen in the marketplace that you think is going to just drive that thing right through the roof. doesn't happen very often. So... Um, it's kind of like if you're buying something at a garage sale. You know, you go to a garage sale, you see a, a $100 bicycle, and it's for sale at $10. That's a good buy, right? Uh, if you see a $100 bicycle, and it's for sale for $95, you think to yourself, well, I can buy that, but, uh, you know, buy a brand new one, so why should I bother? Stock's kind of like the same thing. It's, uh, you know, you want to buy low and sell high, that's how you make profit, Okay. So that, that's a stock. Um, there's charts. There's more to stocks, but I'll get into that later on. Uh, you have mutual funds. Uh, a mutual fund kind of sounds like a good deal until you start looking in underneath the hood, so to speak. You peel back the layers and look at all the details. Uh, a mutual fund is a is a it's just that it's a picture of a, a mutual fund manager goes out and buys a collection of stocks. And the idea is that person is kind of like your trading agent, so to speak. So you buy a share of the mutual fund, and that mutual fund turns around and invests that money in a collection of stocks. And in their prospectus, their bio, if you would, they'll tell you like, uh, well, we're you know we're specializing in say tech stocks, or we're specializing in real estate stock. They usually specialize in something. The uh, they, they have a manager, and that person is supposed to be a real expert when it comes to trading these things. And so the theory behind it is they're going to make more money doing better trades than you would as an individual investor. Uh, you got to be weary or, or 
careful with them because they'll use a lot of whizzy words to make it sound like, oh, this mutual fund's not really going to cost you a lot. But there's a lot of hidden fees and, uh, and things like that associated with the mutual funds to where in the end, you might not make as much as you really think you're going to, honestly. Um, the downside, a couple of downsides to a mutual fund. Again, you're buying a share of the mutual fund, and the mutual fund owns a bunch of shares of stock. Okay, so when you the mutual fund only changes value at the end of the trading day, and and then and when you sell it or buy it, it happens at the end of the day. So let's say the market's crashing. You know, you get up that morning, the world's gone to hell, and the market is just it's diving. You can't get out of that mutual fund that that moment. You've got you're gonna suffer the losses, and by the time you can sell it, you've probably lost a lot of your gains. That's one downside to it. Um, the other downside is the manager of that mutual fund makes their uh, commission based on how much money has been invested into the mutual fund. So it doesn't matter if that mutual fund has made money or lost money or done nothing, literally. Uh, that, that manager makes his commission. So it's kind of like a guaranteed deal for that person. Kind of a sweet deal, really, when you think about it. Um, and so the problem with that is there, there's no incentive, really. I mean, yeah, they want it to be doing well, but... Uh, you know, think about it. You know, it's, it's kind of it almost like reminds me of like a communist worker. Yeah, they're working, but they don't really have an incentive to work hard because why bother? Um, and again, you can't get out of the mutual fund except once a day. Not such a great deal. The other downside, I would say, or con to a mutual fund is a stock you can short it, which means you can make money on a stock when it goes down versus only when it goes up. With a mutual fund, it only makes money when those stocks go up. And if it if they're not, you're not making money. And when they go down, you're losing money in your uh, mutual fund. So that's a mutual fund. Let's talk about the next thing that comes to mind is, uh, is an ETF, electronically traded fund. This is a completely different security versus a mutual fund. Electronically traded fund means that it's a it's another fund. It's typically controlled electronically, meaning it's set up like a computer program. It invests in certain uh, areas or certain types of stocks, what have you. And so that because it's not really managed hands-on by a manager, it's it's kind of electronically controlled. Uh, the fees that they charge are minimal, almost nothing practically. The best part about a, an electronically traded fund is just like a stock, its value goes up and down throughout the day and you can liquidate it anytime throughout the day. So you can buy and sell it just like you do a stock. You have the advantage of a mutual and the fact that you're actually investing into several things at one time and um, and you don't have a bunch of hidden fees and, a, and a, you know, you're, not, you're basically not getting screwed over. So electronically traded fund is a pretty good thing. Um, also, there's some inverses, and what those mean is, see, to, to short a stock, you have to have a fairly, well, some people might not consider it a lot, but some people would. The average investor just starting out doesn't, doesn't have, say, 10, 15, 20,000 to stick into an account. And until you have a fairly large amount sitting in your account with your brokerage, they won't allow you to short the stock because if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose some money. And if you don't set up the safeguards, you could lose money. And so then you need to know that you got the money covered. So that's why you have to have money sitting in the account. If you buy an inverse electronically traded fund, it's the same as shorting a stock, but you don't have to have that huge sum. And the only thing you're risking is what you've bought. Uh, but again, if uh, if those stocks that they invest in, if they're going down, then the inverse is of that that ETF, that inverse ETF, is actually going up because they're shorting those stocks. They're not going along or waiting for them to go up. 
Okay. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is uh, a bond. A bond is uh, like it's another type of security. For example, municipal municipal. God, say a city. There you go. Can't say municipality. Municipality. That word just does not want to come out today, does it? Anyhow, um, they will issue a bond to raise money. And they sell that bond, and they say, okay, like in two years, they're going to pay 5% or something, whatever, right? Um, and then there's yields on it. So to understand the yields, if you would, a uh, professor did this years ago in a class I was in, to understand the yields. You put out your arms. One side is interest. This is interest. The other side is the yield on a bond. If the interest rate goes down, the yield goes up. If the interest goes up, the yield goes down. Right now, interest rates are sitting at pretty close to zero. So if the interest rate can't go, can't go down, then the yield can't go up. You understand the problem that bonds are in right now? So, yeah, not a great thing right now. Unless you just want to sit on it until it's maturity, and then you gain the, what, 5 or 10% or whatever it is. Um, honestly, you can do better with an ETF, and sometimes you can do that in, in a day or two or a week or two, so I uh, wouldn't suggest the uh, bonds. So that's the basics of securities, and we'll stop for now.